Welcome. My name is Dr. Angela Siegel, and now we'll carry on learning Java and take a look at what we can do with arithmetic. So the goal of this will be to understand the properties and limitations of numeric data types, which we will be using uh, for our arithmetic calculations. And then we're going to write arithmetic expressions and assignment statements. So if you're following along in our book, Big Java Late Objects, you'll note that we're into section 2.2. Java has many different numeric data types that we can use. And given that, how do we choose which type we want to be making use of? For instance, even amongst our integer types, we see that we can choose byte, short, int, and long as our data type. Generally, we're going to be working with ints. And, and what you'll notice is that each of these data types has a range of numbers that they can hold. So if you choose to work with a data type of byte, you can only store the values between negative 128 and up to positive 127. If we choose int, we're okay in most scenarios. It, it will capture data from roughly negative 2 billion up to positive 2 billion. The reason that these exist is so that we can be really efficient with our use of space. A byte takes up much less space than an int, um, and you can see that reflected here. Uh, so a short takes double the amount of storage as a byte does. When we want to work with numbers that have decimal places, um, we're talking about floating point numbers. And in fact, they come in two different types as well. Um, so float is, is a huge number that includes decimal places. But if we want precision, um, double the precision of a float, um, we would use data type double. And there's a cost to that. So even though that's necessary for heavy math, it takes up double the storage. And so we have to be careful when we make considerations uh, for efficiency sake, we'll want to know how that is costing us. So there are limitations of each data type, and, and there's a range of values it can hold, as shown on the previous slide. If we're working with integers, we're choosing from one of the following data types, byte, short, int, and long in the light blue. And if we're working with decimal numbers, those numbers that have fractional parts, then we'll want to be considering float and double as our data type. So. The title of this all was arithmetic, and Java supports all of the same basic math that your calculator does. We can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, um, and division, and we do all of those with the symbols that you've probably made use of before, plus the minus sign, an asterisk uh, to denote multiplication, and a slash to denote division. So you write your expressions just a bit differently. Um, and it looks a little bit like what you might type into your calculator, which is likely a little computer. So we have in algebra, if we wanted to write out a plus b divided by 2, we could do it as we see on the screen. In Java, we just have to spread that out on one line. And so we put parentheses around the a plus b. Um, and then we'd, we'd use that slash uh, to denote division uh, by 2. And what we see is the parentheses are really important because that says we have to add a and b together before we divide by 2. The reason those parentheses are so important is because Java follows the same uh, mathematical precedence as you learned in high school or before. So precedence is similar to that of algebra that you've already learned. And you might have heard PEDMAS or BEDMAS. It depends which school you went to and which teacher you had. Uh, but the rules are the same. Essentially, you choose to first do everything within brackets or parentheses, hence the P or the B. Um, depends what you want to call it. Um, so you deal with everything inside the parentheses first. And then you deal with exponents. Then you divide or multiply as necessary, and then finally add and subtract, always from left to right. So there is a warning. When we mix numeric data types together, we can have unexpected results. It's safe to convert a value from an integer type to a floating point type. 
Uh, for instance, if we take the number five and we move it to 5.0, no precision is lost. Well, we've just added a place to store uh, more precise information should we have uh, anything after that decimal at a later point in time. Going the other way can be dangerous. So if we took the, the floating point number 5.3 and we moved it to an integer, what would we do with that point three? Uh, the best we can do is preserve the five. And so in fact, all fractional information is lost. That point three is just discarded. It's not rounded. Um, and so if we took 5.9 and moved it to an integer, we actually move that to five, uh, really losing a huge part of information by removing and discarding that point nine. If you mix integer and floating point types in an expression, no precision is lost. So in the following example, we have two variables, area and pi, that are of type double, they're floating point types, and we have an integer variable radius. When we multiply uh, in the last line, radius uh, times radius times pi, we're taking an integer times an integer times a double, um, and that results actually in a double. And so we keep the precision um, that we require to, to uh, to remain a, a double. And so the area doesn't lose any of that key information that needs to be there. One of the most common things that you will do, and, and we'll see later why this becomes such a use case, um, is incrementing a variable by one or decrementing a variable by one. And so that is taking a variable, adding one to it, or taking that same another variable and subtracting one from it. So it's, it's so common that there's a shorthand version for each, and you might as well get used to them now because you will use them a lot. Um, and so the way that we do that is, uh, you can see in the example here, the shortcut to adding one, incrementing by one, is to take the variable name and follow it by plus plus. So if we have this integer variable counter, if we type counter plus plus, and not forget the semicolon, um, what that actually does is the same as counter equals counter plus one. Likewise, we can decrement by typing counter minus minus, semicolon, and that's the same as counter equals counter minus one. So we take what's in that counter, we subtract one from it. When we're dividing, if both parts of the division are integers, the result will be an integer. So this is important to remember because if we take, for example, uh, the number seven divided by the number four, you have an idea what this should mean, right? That's one and three quarters or 1.75. But in fact, when we do this uh, in Java, because seven is an integer and four is an integer, we lose all of that fractional information and the result is one. Uh, so we lose the, the three quarters fraction and it's not rounded up to two, it's just lost. And so the answer, the result of this is one. Um, it's kind of the same as floor division. So it's like dividing and then taking the integer that's, that's at or just below the number. If you're interested in the remainder that's left over when you divide uh, an integer by another, what you're interested in is called the modulus. Um, and we use the percent operator to find that remainder. So in the following line, we see int remainder equals seven modulo four using that percent sign. And what we get is the remainder that it exists after you take seven and divide by four. So in this case, we would see that seven divided by four is one with a remainder of three. So the result held in our variable remainder is the number, the integer three. So that's our remainder. So if you wanted to say convert the number of pennies in an account into the number of dollars and cents, what one would do is take the number of pennies and divide by 100. And using Java division, we don't even have to remove the fractional part because it's done for us. And in fact, because it uses floor division, we're not over counting, we're not rounding up, we're actually saying that's exactly how many dollars exist. The number of cents, would be those left over. So when we divide by 100, we get the number of dollars and anything left over is the cents remaining. 
So on the next line, you can see we could print, I have uh, dollars and blank cents. And so dollars would hold, the, the variable dollars would hold the dollars you have, and uh, cents would hold uh, the number of pennies left over. So the result of this would be the output, I have $47.52. In Java, there are no symbols for power and roots. However, we can still do this. So the Java library has many mathematical functions available to us, such as math.squareRoot and math.power, raising, math .pow, um, raising um, a number to a power. So you can see that the expression a times b to the c power, to the power c, is in Java, we would have to write out as a star times uh, math.pow, and then the first uh, thing expected in our math.pow fun mathematical function, math.pow, is the base, b, and the second argument is the power we wish to raise b to. So a times b to the power of c becomes a star math.pow, b comma c. And if we wanted to take the square root of something, we can also do that. Um, the square root of x becomes math.sqrt, parentheses, x. And that just takes the square root of x and returns it to that location. So there are many mathematical methods that we can make use of. If we look through this list, and the list is longer than what I'm showing you, but this is just the highlight reel. Um, we can take the square root of a number. We can take um, the a value x and raise it to the power y. We can find the minimum value between two items. We can find the maximum value between x and y. We can round a number to the nearest integer, take the absolute value, so remove any negative signs and just return the positive version of an integer. We can take, uh, uh, so we can take e and raise it to the power of x which is what we see with math.exp. We can make use of the constant variable pi just by referring to math.pi, capitalized because it's a constant, pi doesn't change. Um, we can take out the logarithm um, of x, base e. We can also take the logarithm by using log 10, uh, base 10. We can take the sine of x, the cosine, the tangent. We can convert a value to radians from degrees and we convert it from radians to degrees as well. So many things that we can make use of. We have to be careful when it comes to accidental number type conversion. So you'll see on the first line we have um, a floating point variable total of data type double and we don't know if price and tax are double or integer, um, but that's okay because there's no precision lost as we hold something, an integer in a double. The problem is when we go the other way. So we discussed this, but if we take total, which is a, a, a floating point type, double, and we try to place that into an integer type, dollars, we get an error. In fact, the Java compiler does not allow this. A direct assignment of a floating point value into an integer variable causes an error. So in order to do that, you want to use the cast operator. And this forces a conversion. So what we do is what you see in bright blue on the last line. Um, so again, we have this double total. And we want to hold it into uh, dollars. And what we do is we use this bracket int. And what it does is it converts it uh, into an integer. You lose the fractional part of the floating point value. So if if total was 19.99, we lose the 0.99. We don't round to 20, we just drop it completely and we move it to, to 19. There's no rounding. So the syntax for casting is just that you have the data type that you wish to cast to inside parentheses before the value. And the parentheses are part of the cast operator. They have to be there. The parentheses on the right side needn't be there uh, unless you're you're applying it the casting to the full set. So because we want to apply this in this example to price plus tax, then that expression must be encompassed by a parentheses. 
casting should be used carefully. So if you just want to round something, you should use math.round to round a floating point number to the nearest whole number. Uh, otherwise, you are losing that fractional part, and, and that's important. Uh, this method, though, this is the math method, the mathematical function math.round returns a long integer. It's an integer type, but it is not an int. It is of type long. So large floating point numbers um, that are rounded can't be stored in int. So we want to be quite careful about accidental integer division. If we had an if we wanted to take the average of the last three test scores, and they happen to be of integer data type, uh, so we have int variables t1, t2, and t3, holding 98, 89, and 97 respectively, if we wish to take the average of those, we might wish to hold that in a double data type, and we would sum them up and divide by 3. Now, this wouldn't actually cause an error. Java would let us do this, but the average of those is 94.666667, okay? And what happens because the sum of t1 to t3 is an integer and we're dividing by the integer 3, it treats that as integer division and returns 94. It's okay to store 94 as a double, but you drop everything that remains. So the fractional part is lost and the score just went down from 94.667 to 94. If, if that would have made a huge difference to that student's grade, they would have been upset by that precision loss. So all of the calculation on the right happens first. Since all are of type int, the compiler uses integer division. The result, an int, is assigned to the variable average, um, which is a double but no fraction is included, and so it would always end in that point zero, and we would lose the fractional part. Something else that we want to be mindful of is that floating point values are not exact. There is a limitation of binary values that are, are what exist behind all of these numbers that we're storing. So not all floating point numbers have an exact representation, and some of them might be simpler than you might think. So this can happen in situations that are maybe unexpected. Imagine we have a double variable price set to 4.35 and quantity is an int and it's initialized to 100. If we hold in a variable total of type double, the product of those two, so price times quantity or 4.35 times 100, and then print that, we probably have an idea of what we might get. Right? This should be 4.35 times 100, which is 435.0, right? Unfortunately, because of the precision loss, it's actually 434.9999999999994. And so this is a funny side effect and, and uh, something that we just have to be mindful of. The other thing that I want you to remind yourself of as you're looking through your code is that we need to have balanced parentheses. So in this following example, if you look at the number of opening parentheses, uh, we have one, two, three, and we have two closing parentheses. So this is not okay. Now consider uh, the following one. We've got one, two, three opening parentheses and one, two, three three closing parentheses. So that should be okay, right? However, uh, we have an open and a closing, and then we have another closing. So it's closing something that hasn't been open. So having these unbalanced parentheses will cause errors in Java. Oh, so this, this expression has three opening and three closing, but it's still not quite right. So it's more than that. At any point in an expression, the count of the opening parentheses must be greater than or equal to the count of the closing parentheses. And when you get to the end of your expression, those two counts must be the same. The final piece that I want to leave you with as you start setting out to try out some arithmetic exp expressions of your own is use spaces in your expressions. Make space for the humans. We need to be able to read this and total equals subtotal plus tax amount on the first line is much easier to read than when we jam all of that together. Uh, it's just like 
reading words that are strung together in uh, in a book, we, do, we don't need the spaces. We could read it and it would take up less paper if we just had to parse that ourselves, but it's much easier to read with the space between the words. So make space for the humans. And that's it for arithmetic. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. What's next? We should ask the user. That's right. Next up is user input.